To understand the July 9th, 2006 accident on Son of Beast, we have to take a trip back in time to the year 2000. The year 2000 was a huge year for roller coasters in Ohio. Six Flags Ohio would add four new roller coasters. Cedar Point would add the world's first giga coaster and the world's tallest coaster at the time, Millennium Force. What would Paramount's Kings Island do to stand out? Paramount's Kings Island is going to unleash on the world something that we can call the sequel to the beast. This is the son of beast. Paramount decided to break new records for the year 2000 by introducing the world's tallest and fastest wooden coaster, Son of Beast. For cost reasons, Paramount's Kings Island selected the Roller Coaster Corporation of America, or RCCA, to build the new ride. To say RCCA did a poor job is an understatement. In January 2000, the ride partially collapsed. This, as well as a number of other structural issues, caused PKI to fire RCCA before they finished construction on the new ride. PKI completed the construction themselves while correcting as many of the structural issues as they could find. <laughs> Is this ride safe? Assembled it myself last night. I think I did an okay job. Just okay? What if something bad happens? We just Ignore it and fix it in the off-season. The ride officially opened a month late on May 26, 2000 to mostly negative reviews. On July 14, 2001, just over a year after the coaster opened, the first injury requiring hospitalization occurred on Son of Beast when a 44-year-old man broke his neck due to the roughness of the ride. On August 7, that same year, another man broke his neck on the ride due to its roughness. Both men survived, but the ride's reputation was falling fast. Every year in the off-season, PKI tried to reinforce parts of the structure and retrack parts of the ride to make the ride more stable and less rough. In April 2003, a woman severely injured her back due to the roughness of the ride. After this, the list of problems with Son of Beast seemed to subside a bit. The rest of 2003, 2004, and 2005 reported no major injuries on Son of Beast. Prior to the start of the 2006 season, Paramount would make one of their last major investments in PKI. They had large amounts of the ride retracked, and many sections were given additional support. In May 2006, Cedar Fair bought Paramount's Kings Island and inherited a whole world of problems. Son of Beast was operating normally on July 9, 2006. Train 1 was passing over the first giant double helix shortly before 4.40 p.m. When it began to climb out of the first part of the helix, three ledgers that supported Bent 290, part of the support structure for the ride, snapped. This caused the track to sag about five inches. Train 1 continued to the end of the ride without issue. The structure had enough built-in elasticity to withstand the first train. However, the sag in the track remained. At 4.45 p.m., Train 2, now loaded with 27 guests, traversed the same section of track. This time, the already broken supports for Bent 290 were pushed down once again by the heavy train. The riders experienced a huge jolt that caused multiple upper body injuries from this excruciatingly painful moment of the ride. The train continued to the end of the ride. Shortly after Train 2 hit the final brakes, one of the diligent ride operators working that day noticed that something was wrong. All of the riders in Train 2 seemed to be injured. A ride operator working on the load side of the platform screamed to controls to e-stop the ride. The operator in controls e-stopped the ride before train 1 could leave the lift hill for what would have likely been a catastrophic third pass. The riders on the lift hill were evacuated from the ride using standard procedure and none were injured. All 27 guests from train 2 were taken to the hospital where they were treated for their injuries. All were released and suffered no known long-term injuries. The investigation initiated by the Ohio Department of Agriculture and Kings Island concluded that the wood used in the construction of Son of Beast was of significant quality and its condition had not contributed to the failure. The reinforcement work Kings Island had been performing on the ride had eliminated several of the flaws in the RCCA design. However, they had made parts of the ride stiffer than anticipated, 
leading to more stress on specific parts of the ride, such as Bent 290. The breakages at Bent 290 had been caused by too much lateral force being applied to a vertical support. Son of Beast had at least 50 other spots on the ride with this problem. They finally determined that Son of Beast was, quote, not operating on the ragged edge and was well on its way to becoming a safe and reliable ride once these problems were addressed. Before the start of the 2007 season, many changes were made to Son of Beast, including the changes outlined in the report, as well as the addition of lighter trains that were unfortunately unable to complete the ride's vertical loop, leading to its removal. Despite these changes, Son of Beast remained a very rough ride, and after several seasons of injuries caused by the roughness of the ride, including a death in 2007 likely due to a pre-existing condition the rider had, the ride was closed for good in 2009. Some claim this was due to a report of a brain injury caused by the ride, but this injury was never officially reported by a guest that year. Overall, Son of Beast was a huge failure from start to finish that inflicted huge amounts of pain on millions of riders. Since this accident, companies like GCI and Gravity Group have gone on to create some great, smooth, and structurally sound wooden coasters such as Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. Rides that continue to give safe and smooth rides to this day.